everybody and welcome back to another episode of Prestige Liquids. My name is Andrew and as always it is fantastic to have you here with me again on another whiskey review video. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for joining me along my journey and if you're new to the channel then please make sure you hit that bell notification and the subscription button right now so that you can stay up to date with all future content. Now in today's video, I this is part two of my bakery hills, bakery yeah, sorry, my Bakery Hill series. Um, in the previous video, I reviewed the Classic Malt, hence why that bottle is no longer in here. I have finished it. It was fantastic. Got, you can go and check out that review. I have got a link in the description for my Bakery Hill playlist, and I'll put the info card up there so you guys can have some easy access to that. So, for now, let's take this one out. And in today's video, I am going to be reviewing the Bakery Hill Peated Malt. So, let's just pour a little bit of this into the glass and get on with the video. So, as you may remember from the previous video, Bakery Hill is a Victorian um, distillery. Uh, so, that's Victoria, Australia. As I mentioned, it's an Australian distillery. Uh, for this peated expression, um, they have used a peated barley that has been sourced from Northern Scotland. Um, they've done this to give it more of like a Highland style peat. Um, but all the milling, brewing and distilling has all taken place at their Melbourne based distillery. Now this has been aged in ex-bourbon casks from Jack Daniels uh, for at least a minimum of 8 years. Um, which for an Aussie whiskey is actually quite a big deal. It's not very common to, to find uh, a whiskey in that um, age bracket. Usually they go for about say 2 to 4 years at the most. Um, the other awesome thing about this is that just like with the classic malt, they've done single barrel maturation, so they haven't blended any of their other um, like whiskies into this. So what that means is that with future releases, you will get batch variations. Uh, this has been bottled at 46% ABV. I believe it is also non. <laughs> There's my cheat sheet coming into view. Uh, yeah, so 46% ABV, non-chill filtered, I also believe that is naturally coloured. So yeah, there's um, no, no added colour either. So, yeah, that's it. Um, let's, so that's the little sample bottle there. But let's get on with the review and let's see what we get. So actually one thing I should mention as well, um, going by the notes um, of the Bakery Hill website, um, they have said that they've aimed this at a, I guess for fans of Isla whiskies. So let's see. Uh, we'll say we'll see what what I get from that and see how close it is to those um, Isla style whiskies. So here we go. And I apologise now. We've got some wild cockatoos flying over, and my pet one here may start screeching his head off. So. Forgive me if that happens. All right, let's move ahead on the nose. Cheers. Okay, so on the nose, it's a soft peat. Uh, it's not very strong or very intense. It's more of a floral, grainy style uh, of peat. You can definitely notice the, the malt. It's, and as they mentioned, being more of like a, a highland style peat that they've used it is more foresty it's not a coastal peat so think of your more like your foresty leaf matter that dense earthiness there's a slight level of saltiness to it as well but that's more of like a basic mineral note that it has going on i'm also getting apples pears a little bit of vanilla and just a soft level of smoke and barrel char coming through this is actually quite quite similar i have to say it is quite similar to an ardbeg i'm very surprised that it has a like the basic notes of an ardbeg just without that intense level of of smoke that Ardbeg has and that high density of peat. It's a much more subdued version. 
All right, let's move on to the palette and see what we get. So cheers. All right, so the mouthfeel, it's kind of strange. It starts off very soft, very thin, and then it just ramps up. It becomes thick and syrupy. That smokiness comes through. Uh, it's quite dry, it's very oaky as well, but not over oaked. It's just got a, that, a, a beautiful level of cask influence coming through. The peat, again, soft and fruity. Uh, again, it is more the peat level, or say more so the taste of this. The peat is, is a lot more similar to a Highland Park. Um, I'm not really getting an Isla style peat on the palate. Um, that feature was probably a bit there more prominently on the nose. Uh, again, more apples, pears, and this is quite floral as well. Right, so, for the the finish, it's it's short to medium, quite sweet, a nice level of smoke that comes through with a little bit of pepper. Uh, I have to say. This particular whiskey, I'll, I'm enjoying it, but to be honest, I thought I was going to like it more. Uh, so far, the classic malt is, it's perfect. It's a stunning whiskey, but this one to me seems to be a bit unbalanced. There's a, I don't know, there's a certain something going on um, in this glass at the moment that's just not gelling with me. Uh, it's got fantastic elements about it. You can say the, the taste of the malt is fantastic. The taste of the peat by itself is fantastic. But for some reason or another, they're just not gelling well together. There's, it's like there's some friction between those, those profiles that's just not allowing them to, I guess, fully integrate. And like I said, there just, there just seems to be this weird in balance it's almost like a just try and think what is this taste that i'm getting it has a it's it's kind of a bit of a, a soapy taste and I, I know that might sound a bit strange um this glass is i know the glass is clean i did just um clean it but again i only really use say uh, water i try not to use as much soap if i can uh, but yeah there's just something about this that's just uh, it, like i said it, it, there's just a certain level of unbalanced um flavors that are going on but uh, i think this is definitely uh something that a lot of people will enjoy uh, it is that's got some great notes in it uh, that are really good for say for beginners and even say more like intermediate level drinkers that are for those that are trying to develop their palates there are definitely some notes that you'll be able to pick up but you know say that's my only real issue with it there is that they, it it i think it just needs a little bit of tweaking and then it would be perfect but coming off the classic malt um yeah it just really doesn't compare that classic malt was absolutely amazing but um, I'll leave it at that for now. So that's my review on this. Um, maybe in about a week or so, I'll have the last video done there for the, the double wood. So stay, um, stay tuned for that. And like I said, there is a link down in the, in the description down below um, for, the, um, for the Bakery Hill playlist. So, all right, I've rambled on enough. I'll see you all again on the next video. Get this.